Lucky Cash and Lori Kilmartin. It's recording in progress, Lori. The show has begun. Yes. I, you when we last three... left our intrepid uh, adventurers, you and yes. I, we you were in New York, I think. No. No, I was in New York. I was yes. in DC. Right. I've I've Jackie, been many places. Do you even know where you are right now? Yes, I'm in my backyard, but there's a lot of June bugs eating all of our figs. Ooh, so let's go backwards because you don't know where you were, but you know where you are now. And let's take it back day by day until we hit last Monday. Okay, so I was in Milwaukee staring deeply into the eyeballs of many of my siblings. Right. And and some of and some of the my brother's kids and then a girlfriend and then uh, a couple of sister in laws. And of course, one Elliot Cation. Yay! Uh, there he is. I got a new painting from him. Nice. That I like. It's a fox. I like it. He did a, a, a coyote <laughs> at a one fox. point. It's a fox. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and uh, he did a coyote that I really liked. And Carmen Morales saw it on my wall and she goes, What does your dad want for these? $100? I'll give you $100. And I was like, God dang it. And so I said, I gave it to her and then I sent the $100 to my dad. And then he, of course, put it into some sort of uh, gambling thing. Trust fund? Oh, okay. Oh, um, yeah, no. <laughs> Generational wealth we do not have. <laughs> Andy Ashcraft asked me today, so do you, would you say that you have generational wealth? And I was like, we have been together for low these, no, there's not a dime. And uh, matter of fact, my parents actively worked against Russ and Darla going to college and did not help. And then they created it from whole cloth. And then I was dragged along on top of that cloth. Interesting. Uh, so you don't I, think your I mean, dad is sitting on a secret? Even if he was to <laughs> divide it between six kids, it's still it's not gonna. Nothing's yeah. gonna change. He's got a unicorn that's made out of pecan shells. That's that's the that's the real. Maybe, maybe okay. he's keeping some. Maybe he's keeping some diamonds in there. He said that he opened up one of my grandmother's sewing kits that he had. Like he has this box. That my grandmother kept her sewing stuff and he picked it up wrong and the bottom fell out and there was a 20. <laughs> oh my god how long was she hiding that that's the grandma that stabbed a soldier in the uh, during the Arme <laughs> Armenian war no, right no that's the one who beat a priest off a donkey with a two by four right <laughs> she wished she had stabbed a soldier you uh, come from violent people jackie and i want to commend you on how your commitment to nonviolence. it's you a know, commitment it's not in your it blood is... <laughs> it's uh well, i come from uh we're, we're big we're big runners we're not we're not violent we're we're big uh we're we're, we're we got we're taking it on the arches don't let oh. the door hit you yeah <laughs> uh so so your but, dad's doing okay yeah he's doing okay he's uh you know he's getting older for sure yeah and yeah. uh we went to the hobnob which is in kenosha or racine or kenosha or Racine, who cares? Uh, I, it says Racine, and then my brother Russ corrected me and said it was Kenosha. I hate to see the, the family just driven apart by this argument once again, Jackie. We all drive separately so that when the inevitable <laughs> fight happens, you can throw down $12 and storm out. <laughs> Though in this case, Daryl and I drove together with my dad. And my dad, of course, at one point told this story about how much of a, compared to a buddy of his, He's such a liberal because his daughter's <laughs> dead. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And Darla, bless her heart, literally just her eyes got slightly wider. And then because she was driving. And so yeah. I could see her. I could see both of them in like relief. Like I could yeah. see them the side. And um, her eyes, they stayed real big for a second. And then they just got smaller. Speaking of uh, keeping your temper. And uh, and my dad got to tell a story of where he was the hero, but Darl and I did not particularly think he was. So there you go. And then, yeah, uh, I got there on Wednesday, and I had lost my. I left my phone. Oh my lord, and Jackie! No, I don't want to hear it. Here's what I don't want to hear: is too many people going. You lose things, and I'm like, yes. Uh, I lost my laptop three weeks ago, and I lost, uh, and but I uh, and I left my phone in a lift this time, and the keys okay. 
Well, that was not my fault. That was a fucking act of God. I turned around. They fell into an automatic flushing toilet. And I know. that's not my, that, I mean, that is an act yes, of you're, Yes, you're Satan. innocent in all of all charges, Jackie. Understood. In that case. Yeah, I, but the thing is, is what I don't need is a th more than three people have now said, you lose shit. You should do this. I can't believe you keep losing things. And they're making fun of me. And I'm like, oh, my God, do I get a lot of my self-esteem from these assholes telling me I'm an idiot? I don't want to. I don't want to do it. I don't want to have. Well, that, uh, I wasn't going to offer you a solution. I was just going to make fun of you for losing. Right. Something. This is that would have been it was. That's fine. That is all I needed. And uh, so whatever, uh, what happened was is, so I um, I came from doing DC with Maria, uh -huh. stayed an extra day uh, in DC, we recorded. And then the next day I flew to Nashville and um, I had tapas with most of the women's staff from 800 pound gorilla. Cool. That night, they decided to take me out to dinner, That's and that was cool. a delight. Uh, the next day, I went and toured 800 Pound Gorilla. It was fine. They weren't keeping my money somewhere, like in a stack that they were hoarding. They were mm -hmm. fine. And then... Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm uh, happy to hear it. Yeah, and then I went to Gilda's Club, which was what the, the benefit I was doing for it, which is yeah, sort yeah. of a... It's a clubhouse for people who have cancer and their families and for to hang out in Nashville, right? And that was lovely. And then I showed up at the Nashville Zanies uh, to do the show. And so I get there and the there's one bearded 32-year-old man sitting in there who is clearly like a local and is in with the manager who keeps, who asked me more than twice if I was hosting. Um, <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Okay. And I just said, no. And then, uh, and then. You're headlining, I, correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, uh, if they had worked you, uh, I guess, um, they would know that. Right. Yeah. The guy, the manager guy was probably also 32 years old. It turns out everyone was 32 years old, Lori. Uh, the three white, straight white guys who opened for me were each 32 years old. Evan, <laughs> Trevor, and Zach. Hilarious. Wow. Well, Nashville Evan, is a millennial town, I guess. Uh, it, well, one of them was from Atlanta or Georgia. And, uh, and they were all perfectly nice young men, and they were uh, funny enough. They they did their they did two of them doing ten to fifteens, one of them doing twenty, and it was I think it went Zach Evan Trevor, but it might have gone Zach Trevor Evan. <laughs> sure. But whatever it was, they all had these short, be sort of a Kyle looking beard, right? They had mm -hmm. that going on. Yeah, that's it. And uh, they were all wearing. One of them was missing his baseball cap because I surreptitiously took a picture of them, and because uh, we were s sitting around, and I said, um, uh, "Are you guys all really thirty-two years old with that haircut?" And um, Jackie, you're coming in for him. I love it. You're very aggressive. Well, what I liked was Zach then said to me, "You should go on stage." and tell them that you drove us here in a minivan. And I laughed. And then I said that I, I did not say this, but I thought, I take it you don't think I'm in my 30s. OK. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so the show was, you know, it's a benefit. So they're a little stiff. They're a little yeah. stiff. They're a little stiff. And then I got up. And I only had everybody, I only had to do 35, 40 minutes. So that's what yeah. I did. Yeah. And then um, this guy. Where is it? Hello, chatter. Host disabled. Oh, I pressed screen share instead of. Hey, next week, are we going to try and do Riverside? We are. Get away from. What, you, what are we talking about? Oh, oh I see. Getting oh, away from Sam. Okay. Is that oh, his yeah. name? Yes. Okay. So he came back there uh, and he was like, I didn't know it was going to be you. Hannibal Burris was, uh, had the, I was doing the seven o'clock benefit. He was doing a nine fifteen. Hannibal Burris was doing a nine fifteen sold out show. 
but both shows were actually sold out. The benefit was sold out as well. And, um, and it was super fun, but that guy, uh, the next day emailed my agent and said, uh, do you think Jackie would do Rosemont? And I said, um, I'm going to need this amount of money. And I bet I thought I did. All right. Uh, what? <laughs> Jackie, if you get that amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's come back to me. Never say no without a number, but it was hilarious. Cause I was talking to my agent and I was like, he said, you don't want to do that room. Right. And I said, I would love to tell you that I don't, but I also want to tell you that I'm a comic. So yeah. uh, what I want to tell he, you. But does he, he owns, which one is it? I thought that guy owned all Nashville. He owns all of them? Uh, I yeah, I think they, I think that. Why didn't, why the fuck don't they book me anymore? <coughs> God, I hate this business. Well, I think it's a woman booking now since Bert retired. Yeah. Yeah, but if he went around her, then yeah. he's also booking it. Right, so he must have mentioned my name to her, and then she must have called my agent. And then I uh, I want to do the den. I want to do, like, a lodge again. I want to do other yeah. things in Chicago, quite honestly. Yeah. Okay. Um, unless they want to give me a pile of cash. Or if I could just do the downtown club, I think I would probably do that. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of, you know. I mean, if, I did, then, I did because their I'm New a... Year's comic. Right. I did their New Year's Eve show like 2018. You know? Right. I and remember now that. I can't get any work. Yeah, that's weird. You know, right? I just a different person booking it. Oh, I hate this business. I just hate it. You're never safe. Yeah. You're never in. It's all temporary. <laughs> no, Book no. Everything. All of a sudden you can't make a living. Ugh. Everything. Everything is exactly that. You are correct. And. Um, yeah, so, and then, and oh, but in between all of that, I did Oshkosh. I did, I did Lyle's, Lyle's room. Lyle's Lyle was, room. Lyle was great. Yeah. Uh, Phil, who owns the Time Theater, was great. Yeah. Uh, did you get a my, notebook? I did get a notebook. It said, help the person in front of you, debossed. I said, oh, you got it embossed. And he said, it's actually debossed. And I said, would you like to be on my podcast, The Dork Forest? <laughs> And <laughs> it can happen that quick, folks. <laughs> Actually, you can be offered it immediately and then it'll take it forever to book it. But um, <laughs> just because the scheduling seems to be the hardest. Um, but he, he just gave it. It was very last minute and it was super fun. Two of my best friends, why my roommate from when I first moved here yeah. to Los Angeles, we shared a studio for a year and a half until she gave me a complete OXO set and said, we're in our thirties. We need to live alone or with men. Uh, please get your own apartment. Right. And, uh, and so, uh, <laughs> Jennifer What's McClain, an OXO set? You know, OXO makes those kitchen appliances, those, the kitchen Oh, stuff. oh, oh, right, right, Ladles right. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> she gave you, she gave you kitchen <laughs> utensils and said, get out. Okay. <laughs> sure did. It was pretty awesome. I still have them there, you know, Oxa, it's good, it's good shit. Yeah, anyway, high so high quality nonsense. And uh, Amy Harmon, who I've known since she used to wait tables at Knuckleheads at the Mall of America, and is now like a very, very, like, she doesn't have any work now because of the strike, but she's a makeup artist. Oh, cool. And, uh, and she does a lot of, yeah, she does like famous shows. Like I think she worked on Scandal and uh wow. remember that show yeah um yeah but that and that was years ago i'm sure i know that there's whatever we all because they were t they were both there because both they're both from oshkosh yeah and they were both taking care of their moms and uh Jackie, i just heard of another comic who moved back home to take care of her mom too do you remember oh, wow. we haven't seen her in a while do you remember her um hmm. oh god yeah yeah, she, okay. Yeah, Cause I haven't seen her in so long and I, uh, yeah, I mean, Jesus. Yep. Yep. 
It's uh, I just saw my buddy Joe Wilson, who hosted the Dork Forest with me the first three years, has uh, pancreatic cancer and very right. sad. But mm-hmm. he uh, is opening for TIG oh, in, no- in, in northern New York because he went home. Him and his wife went home to take care of their parents in northern uh, New York. Yeah. And then Joe got cancer. And um, he did he just did a guest set on a Karen Rontowski show. I think outside of Utica, because Karen yeah. Rontowski w- moved back to take care of her parents. Guys, so, parents, <clears throat> here's my advice, young comics. Get successful before your parents get old so you can hire people to do this for you, okay? Right, You right. having to drop everything and move back to that shit town you left, you know, <laughs> like, like in, in the middle of the night, like a Bruce Springsteen song. Now you got to go back. Mm-hmm. It's hard, man. Yeah, so... But the show itself, and um, I don't know where we're at. Where are we at, Kyle? Are we at Comic of the Week time? 15. Okay. It's a secret. (laughs) It's still a secret who the Comic of the Week is. But uh, the show was super fun. And get this, a guy from my high school was there. And he was a guy who beat me up in fifth grade and uh, pushed me into the crick. And I say crick because it wasn't nothing but a crick. Uh, (laughs) Brian Brian Anderson, John Pribble, and Mark Scudder pushed me into the crick in fifth grade in the winter. Well, it was uh, probably May, but it was still frozen, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Mark Scudder, the only one who apologized. Uh, Brian Anderson was at my show. And, and I, I met him and I recoiled when he said it was Brian Anderson. And then I was like, it's been a hundred years. Let's calm down. And so I took a picture with him, gave him a hug. He sat in the front row, was filming my set. Oh my God. Oh and I my. had to say to him, hey man, if you're filming, you have to stop that because this is new material, I'm working on it. And he said, I'm not. And he put no, it I, down. You don't get to film it. You don't. You do not, right, even if it's old. And then after the show, he comes up to me and he said, I'm not going to do anything. I was filming, but I'm not going to do anything. And I really wanted to say, still lying like a 10-year-old? What's happening? And uh, uh, Mark Scudder was the only one who apologized. And that's too bad because two weeks after they pushed me into the creek, I told uh, Mrs. Bernie that my name was Mark Scudder when she caught me shoplifting. Um, <laughs> Wait, were you she, that? Were you that much of a tomboy that 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 they? Oh yeah, I was Ah! wearing my brother's clothes and I was ten years old. And she said this young man twice when she grabbed me, and so she said, "What's your name?" And I said, "Mark Scudder." And I actually, Mark Scudder came to one of my shows about a year or so ago, and I told him that his wife that story, and his wife was so funny. She said. Well, I like that Mark was the one that apologized. And I said, yeah, Mark Scudder. I was, I had a crush on Mark Scudder. Mark Scudder was the nicest. John Pribble was the good looking one. Mm-hmm. And Brian Anderson was just kind of pushy. He was just kind of a, I don't know who hurt him. Probably like Mr. Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and he, you know, he just spent the last 30 years as an underwater welder. That's what happens when you go back to your hometown. You meet, uh, you find out what other people you went to high school with did for a, a lot living. Of, a lot of mine are real estate agents. A lot of mine. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. My, what, my best friend from high school uh, is the coolest person though. Her name is Alexis and she owns a farm in Solano County and it's called Soul Food Farm. You can find it on Instagram and she makes the, she they have sheep shearing she like will post videos of sheep shearing and you know lavender collecting and they do all this she has like a a a farmer's market that she sponsors and it's tons of organic stuff and she's from danville like she's (laughs) from farm people she just you know she just wanted a farm yeah yeah and she's really good at it Um, that's awesome yeah uh, I've still not heard from Jackie Snyder, who uh, isolated me in fourth grade. <laughs> but I'd like to point out I am more famous than she is, even though I'm barely famous at all. So I think I won that one. I still welcome her apology. Right. Let's all look forward to receiving a non-existent apology. So in Oshkosh, I did go uh, on that street where that theater is. Yeah. Hipster. Hipster Street. Uh, I met Jennifer and Amy for dinner and we sat down uh, at a, at a, at a, at a, essentially like a gastropub. It was kind of hipstery, but it was, 
it looked like a good giving up bar too but uh we were there what's a give it up bar give it up bar it's where you go to just uh give up and crawl into a bottle most of gotcha. wisconsin has a bar like that uh gotcha. every uh five or six blocks anyway so uh i go in that's what i call the refrigerator jackie <laughs> That's when I'd give it up. I just please open don't it up and see vodka it. and baby carrot yourself. Don't do it. <laughs> and uh, the uh, so um, we they all they bought tickets. They brought their aunt and uncle and and mom and they brought all their cousins and you know. Oh, neat. So they brought a bunch of people. Jennifer and, and Amy did. And so I was going to buy dinner, and so I give my card to the waiter guy, and he comes back and he goes, "Guy at the bar just bought dinner for all you ladies," and. <laughs> I was like, what? Jackie. Well, he said that he's going to the show and he was a big fan. And granted, it was Wisconsin, so he might have spent 40 bucks. But uh, (laughs) that's cool. Yeah, so that was neat. And then there was a weird DVD store next to the hop, next to the time theater uh, in Oshkosh. And so I went in there and I bought a Blu ray of Welcome to the Jungle Jumanji, so that I now own it. That's very important to me. Uh, it seems like it would be important to you. It is extremely not important to me, but I'm trying to honor who you are. <laughs> That's very nice of you. And uh, <laughs> hey, Tyson, nobody cares. Knock it off. OK, so uh, the uh, um, and then I go down another, and then I go down another and there's a vintage t-shirt shop that has like old Packers jerseys and old Packer t-shirts. I, and I old saw brewers. these things. I saw the, I, I, I left because I had to go visit the grave of my ancestor, the cemetery of my ancestors. But I was, so I didn't stick around long enough to enter those stores because they open at like a 10 or 11, but I did stop by the coffee house at the corner. And uh, I'm sure yeah, you that went looked in there. cool. I didn't yeah, go in good. there. Was it great? Okay. Yeah, it was good. Uh, I bought a t-shirt from 1990, 50-50, no, not even cotton, a ringer. Uh, I'd have too much information about t-shirts. But yes. uh, here's a scoop. It, remember Lech Walesa? Yes, the, the, uh, the, 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 guy, the Polish guy, yeah. Yeah, he brought down he was the a, Iron Curtain. Right, and he was the first president of Poland after the Berlin Wall fell. There right. was, in Polish, a Solidarity t-shirt from 1990. That's cool. I, I bought that shirt and I take it up to the front and the 18 year old who's working there. I was like, this is amazing. And he's like, what is it? And I said, remember when the Berlin wall felt not remember. I mean, I know he didn't remember, but I was like, like Walesa was the head of the union that uh, helped. He was, was he a welder? I thought he was a welder too, no, right? He might've been a welder, but he was Something head of the like union. That. Yeah. 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 And he was the first president and it's all in Polish. And because I was then going to Milwaukee where the Republican debate was taking place. Oh my God. So it was just a sea of red hats and tinfoil hats and everybody just a complete banana land. Uh, oh I spent, God. I spent two days, uh, just trying to, you know, Hey, uh, you know, Oh yeah. Where your plant uh, parent heard pink. Right. Anything. I was just like, look at this. I, I wore my Pfizer alumni 2021 shirt. And, Jackie, uh, you should have worn a mask. That would really have angered I did wear a, a mask. Yeah. Yes. And it, uh, I got some hairy eyeballs. But I wore it. I'm so sorry. I'm wearing it more as a hobby. I need to yeah. wear it a little more strongly. But uh, the, but it was, uh, and then Darla came and, uh, and we hung out. And it was nice. But I got to do a bunch of sets. I wanted to go. David Tell was at Comedy on State. Ooh. But I didn't go because I don't know him. I think we've met. Yeah. But I don't know him. I And it was a Friday and Saturday night. He's got to know who you are. Absolutely. And uh, I'm sure he would have loved it. Yeah, but I didn't. I also hate it when anyone asks for a guest at Friday for a show or Saturday for a show. So. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. It's rude. Well, yeah. I went, um, I saw Maria. I saw her headlining set at Flappers. Oh, so fun. On- Thursday, I had a, a little set at this, uh, at a, the dog shelter. Oh, that one that you couldn't do. And I, I emailed and they gave me the set. I'm like, oh, try good. to take your set 
you know, that you were surrendering <laughs> and it was fun. And then, uh, but it was over, you know, by eight 30 or eight 15 or something. So I headed on over to flappers and uh, checked out Maria. And I think I missed like the first six minutes, but it was great. Oh, wow. She's yeah. So great. I mean, yeah. She just finds these little moments, like it's like fine embroidery and a, a right. elaborate, beautiful little spider webs. And like nobody else would see that stuff, you know? Uh, and she she does. And it's, uh, you know, it's I love It's just watching a freaking gift to get to yes. watch her do stand-up yeah. comedy. Because you're like, how did you even think of that? Where did that come yes. from? But the other thing is like, oh, this is nothing like me. I cannot do this. I can't, there's no jealousy. It's just like right. watching somebody completely different from you do their thing and going, that's that's how I want to be as good in my in my lane as right. she is in her lane. Yes. Right. And see that and that's and that's so key to be able to just recognize greatness and not yes. get mad about it. You yes. know? Yes, yeah, yeah. You're just yeah. like I uh what did I reposted a Dana Gould uh, reel because he was talking about how, because I was hanging out with my dad. My dad was, he was fine, but it was, he was, he said a couple of weird things. And it's a joke Dana Gould does about how he watched El Torino. Was that? Uh, Grand the Torino. Grant, Grand Torino? No, this post, it was funny. Yeah, Grand Torino. Yeah, Grand Torino. And it was, uh, it was like watching King Kong with a gorilla. He watched Grand Torino with his dad. Oh, and it was like it, watching King Kong with a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the Clint Eastwood movie where yeah. he's uh, old yeah, and where racist? Yeah, he's just an old okay. racist dude. And he gotcha. said, my dad is almost woke. Like he's almost aware of the right, he says the right thing, he says the right thing, and then he blows it up. And then he says the right thing, oh, and he no. says the right thing, and he blows it up. And it's such a great joke because the way he builds it, it's yeah. just nice. Yeah. Yeah. Our parents were exposed to lead, you know, I mean, <laughs> I, honestly, sometimes I'm like, maybe because we can't imagine what they're thinking and how they go down these crazy paths, but they literally were, have brain damage from, <laughs> I'm serious. It's true. Uh, they say over 50% of baby boomers were exposed to lead as children. And that's lifelong that you cannot Undo. But my dad's, he was not a baby boomer. He wasn't a boomer. He was born He's in 38. He was born in 38. The boom was in 45, 46. Well, oh, so he's silent. I mean, you think there was less lead? No. There was more <laughs> lead. So, I don't know. Oh, oh my God. It, 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 it does explain the, the unexplainable to me and how they look at the world, you know? Yeah, it's fine. I just, I just don't know why there, there's 35 year olds walking around with lead helmets on. You know, I mean, why are you such a, a douche? Like, oh, I mean, it, it doesn't explain why there's 40. No, it doesn't explain. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, what so. does is uh, COVID brain damage. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I wish I could be alive 100 years from now when someone has analyzed what this pandemic has done to us. You know, collectively, individually. Because yeah. I think it's way worse than we're aware of, you know? I got two more. I got one guy, friend's dad died of COVID just oh. recently, like a month and a half ago. Oh, wow. And then a um, uh, friend's wife has it really bad and is in the hospital. So, yeah, I mean, there's it's that. It's still out there. For sure. And the, the fact that we were all put on lockdown and then people started partying you know, just going, no, I refuse. And you're like, what, what do you mean? You, re I mean, there's some comics I will never trust now because of how they acted during lockdown, you know? And it's yeah. weird. Like I had no thoughts about them before. And now I'm just like, oh, uh, I know what kind of person you are, but I don't yeah. like feeling like that. I don't like how, you know, I don't like anything that came from it, you know? And yeah. That is when somebody, from it. yeah. But when somebody says something, uh, horrible, I always believe them. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I'm like, why wouldn't I? Yeah. You know, uh, first of all, the, I mean, some of the meanest things I've said, I still regret and, but I meant them and I, and I, I regret saying them and I wouldn't, I don't say them anymore. Like when I get mad, I rarely lose my temper with my mouth. Jackie, right? is this your subtle way of apologizing to me for all the things you've said <laughs> on the podcast? 
Oh no, you're a piece of work. I think that that's been established. <laughs> I got the I got your son a a book. Oh. Let's uh let's take a break. Okay. And let us uh do comic of the week who I worked with in Oshkosh and she was freaking hilarious. Dana Erman, E R H M A N N, but her handle on um on on the Instagram is at EHR underscore head, like her head, EHR underscore head, because you know what no, she does for a no, living? There's no good reason about? for this. No, there's no good reason for this uh, username. You're going to love it. Okay. She does social media for a hospice center. Ah! <laughs> that doesn't even, she's like, it doesn't even make any sense. No. And once a month, I guess her boss comes up to her and says, when are we going to get on TikTok? Oh my and God. she's like, never, never. Well, I don't know funny. what that but has she's to do so with funny. her head, but I like, it's airhead, right? That's. Who oh, is it? Oh, okay. yeah, I think so. I, I love <laughs> I it. But it, the, the, uh, the uh, spelling is only, it's only, um, only any Lori 16 is more annoying to have to spell to people <laughs> than airhead, E-H-R underscore. But, right. Uh, that's and great. I. I uh, I wonder if that's her license plate. Uh, you know how you ever drive with people and they know what the license plate means? I never know what the license plate means. Right. I, you know, I'm not a dumb person, but there's some parts of my brain that don't do things. And one right. of them is boggle, I guess. One of them isn't <laughs> unscramble the words, palindromes, whatever. Well, uh, Mike Kaplan would probably, he, he loves that kind of stuff. Oh, but Zach Jackie, Sherwin. Yeah. Yes. Oh, sure. Yeah. You should work for the DMV. They are pr if people are praying that somebody like you sees the license plate, you know, uh, pig, <laughs> pig fucker, F, F Q K E R, and doesn't doesn't realize doesn't it's get it and just goes yeah. sure sure I like it. I'll send that up the up the pipe. Yes. Uh, and then someone else who has a better eyeball for for Scrabble. Uh, we'll go, this isn't happening, and we'll yes. shut it down. Um, I did a benefit. Um, oh, good. Uh, for a health care, for Medicare for all for California. They're trying to get a, a state bill passed that would just basically give us all health care, right? Which yeah. Would be National like Health changing. Service. Yes, please. Oh, and, uh, and so then I, of course, I wore a mask, right, in the room. Right. And, uh, you know, walk on stage, take it off, put it away. Well, there's an email. Somebody in the audience, several people have tested positive for COVID since the show. So <gasps> it's like, oh. of course, so I, they did. of course they did at a healthcare <clears throat> benefit. At a healthcare so, benefit. Yes. Anyway, that's bananas. Everyone's, uh, everyone's okay. Everyone else that was exposed. Um, let's see this weekend. So last night it was a flappers. That was fun. Two spot fun. flappers. But I have to tell you, on Friday and Saturday, my son had a water polo tournament, tournament, and I was, even though I was in the shade, I was in the sun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like by Too Saturday hot. afternoon, I uh, every the sun had stolen every every piece of me. Like I was nothing. I was just <laughs> skin, and there's nothing inside. It was I just couldn't. You were and, a bag. Uh, you were I was, literally an old bag. I was, you know, again, <laughs> just a bag, old, just, a, just bag. a bag. No, a middle-aged bag. Does that help? No, it doesn't. <laughs> bag is plenty. Why are you, what, why so are you so tired. in love with adjectives all of a sudden? Know, okay, all stick all a sudden, with the I noun. I was okay. a bag. Okay. And then uh, I went over to Flappers and uh, like I, I was uh, just so tired. And then I was on stage at the Yoo room going, who, like, who? who am I? I need, I need to lay down. <laughs> and I got by on my charm and instincts, Jackie, but man, I was wiped out. My son, it was a tournament. They played four games. They went right? three out of four. Nice. My kid is, uh, his goalie skills are like, really, it's fun. It's fun to okay. watch, you know? Oh, good. Good, good. He's, a sh he's shutting down. He he's, uh, he's saving killing, the game, killing dreams left and right. They think they can try <laughs> to get goals past this kid. There was one game where they did, but you know, um, yeah, it was it was fun to watch. You know, it's uh, it's weird because I know there are parents there, and their kids aren't in the game the whole time, or they're in for a little bit, 
you know, and uh, that's hard. You know, you want yeah. your kid to be in all the time. My son, yeah. because he's the only goalie and the only one Oof. who wants to do this horrible job. He's in, he's in it the whole time. So oh it's my gosh. fun, but he is yeah. wiped out. Um, and it's a hard, it's a hard position to play. Yeah. Uh, because if you, when you stop. You're treading goal, water the whole time, right? Oh, that thing. Yeah. But then, you know, it's not as dramatic and exciting as str- like throwing the ball, getting a goal. People are screaming. If you block a goal, they're like, phew. So you don't get the same, <laughs> you know, uh, interaction from the crowd, I think, is when you're a striker. But, uh, you know, whatever. Little well, problem. I have to say I watched the uh, mostly key plays, not going to lie to you, for the Women's World Cup. Yeah. And um, many of the key plays were the the goalies. Oh, yeah. Saving, saving balls. So Absolutely. Yeah. Did yeah. you hear about the, the, w- one of the muckety yes. mucks of the Spanish the Spanish? Team? Oh my God. Oh my God. I saw the kiss that he gave her. No tongue. It looked, it didn't look that bad. Um, he grabbed her head and put his the, lips. Uh, on I saw those lips. lips. They were yeah. wet lips there. Yeah. They were it still out. Wasn't they okay. stuck out. They weren't even thin lips. They, they were like full of juices and he put them on her mouth. And she, yeah, all all people did was point out, "Whoa, that's pretty bad." And she said, "Yeah, I wasn't into it." And then, like, she's, you know, she's being punished for kind of agreeing. Yeah, I didn't want that. You know? Yeah. Oh, it's so yeah. enraging. It's so backwards. It's weird yeah. that we think Europe is so forward in a lot of ways, but at least here, most people would agree. No, you weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> right. Right. It was. I just remember that guy at the Tulsa Comedy Club on New Year's Eve. French Randy? kissing me at New Year's. Randy, Randy, what's his face? He's so gross. French kissing me at midnight. And he was so drunk because he had had like six shots of tequila. And I was like, well, Jackie, yeah. I still have to do 15 minutes, man. Oh, God. Yeah, that's what I thought. He is dead. So in the long run, it's true. He won. Yes. I did. I won. Yes. And uh, uh, yeah. So my driving bit is coming along. Uh, I was, uh, I also thinking of flipping. This other bit that I'm doing, I'm kind of psyched yeah. about that. Did some good uh, joke machine with Bamford over the over the week over the phone. That was kind mm-hmm. of fun. Yeah, this week I uh, we're we're taking Chris um, to see some old friends. So um, I don't know how many sets I'll get to do this lot. week, but. Yep, right. my mom in law. We're gonna take her up to see some other folks, some old friends of hers, and that'll be that'll be fun. Well, and, I, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I uh, I have a new bit. New. It's weird. I had it during during Zoom lockdown shows, and then I sort of it was about my dog Charmy going <laughs> into heat, and then I kind of dropped it, and then I picked it back up again and found some new stuff, and it's working really well. And then as to complement it, because it's about female issues, uh, I have some brand new dick jokes that um, are doing Thank pretty God. well, Jackie. I That's think it. I found a new take on the penis that maybe hasn't been done before <laughs> or in a while. So new excited. take on the penis. I want that to be the name of the show, please. <laughs> The penis. Um, New take on it's weird. The My JetBlue story is going in different zigzaggy ways. And like earlier punchlines are not working anymore, but newer ones are. So then maybe they're undercutting the old ones or they just don't fit in the same story anymore. So I'm, uh, you know, that's going to be a while to retool that one. Uh, but it's coming yeah. along. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. The one joke that I'm thinking of flipping on its head is this whole thing about. Um, because I want to do a joke about how it's not um, that we should leave children alone, right? That uh, that because there's there's comics that famously fuck older children, like 14, 15, 16 year old girls, right? Yes, like for example, Chris D'Elia. Right. and yes. and uh, and the roast guy, but uh, yeah. the yeah, but the but I go into it from that side. And my friend Jennifer McLean was like, 
You should lead with the one good punchline you've got and then try to find decent punchlines after that. And she, I was like, you are not wrong because I am making everyone uncomfortable and they should at least start with a laugh and then get uncomfortable. So are then, you, are you yeah. mentioning, are you just saying gener in a generic pedophile way or are you mentioning that it's male comics? Uh, I think I'm just, I'm saying that people in, in my business. So yeah, male in comics. In show business. Yeah. So, so it's bigger than just comedy. Just comics. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Um, Maria and sort of I alluded to a few, you know, but uh, oh my funny. god, that yes. asterisk joke is such a great that yes, uh, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> that might be on the new album. It's called Crowd Pleaser, yeah. and it's out. Yes, yes, um, yeah. And other than that, the album that I just recorded with Blonde Medicine, and then we yeah. cut it up. Yeah. Into an album and put it on Sirius. They're playing the heck yeah. out of it, which is great. Okay. So I, I have been waiting on not doing, you know, cause I have different sets from that week of the punchline. I could have, have Dominic do that, uh, hire him to do that. Um, so yeah, that's, I, we're just waiting to see, waiting for the album or the special to come out and then see where things go, hmm. where they are. All right. I yeah. Know, it's, it was almost, it was, uh, they've literally been playing it so respectively that I wish that they would play the rest of my albums. Wow. Cause that's what I got this month. Wow. So, okay. I yeah. need to speed up my process then. Because... Yeah. That's needed. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. I know it's needed over here too. Yeah. Right. Right. And I don't think I go back out again until Minneapolis where I'm going to take my Viking colored beanies and, uh, and sell them to the people of Minnesota. Um, I have, so Love I got 500 beanies. Oh my right? God. They shorted me accidentally, uh, yes. 17. Right. And they're union made American made beanies. So they right. cost me a lot of money. So I had to actually email the guy and say, I would like a refund because it's almost $200 worth of beanies. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and he said, I'll send you 17 more beanies in September. And I was like, good, because I have almost 500 now. I certainly don't need 17 more beanies right now. So, but they do look really cool. They look really good. Can you Just pull one on right now? Can we see it? Yeah. No. Well, wait. Yes. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Wait. Let's just pause. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I'm going to put them on... No, I'm going to put them on the website this week. So here's this guy. Ooh, I love it. Cute. And then here's this yes. guy. Yes. Oh, my God. Adorable. Yeah. And how much? So, yeah. Well, That's they're going to have to be 30. Uh, yeah. But that'll be, um, I think that should do it where they're, uh, and, and that'll, it'll just be a flat. Who designed the uh, the logo? Jenny Fine. Who did oh, who did my uh, Horcrux album, and she also Love did. It. She uh, she didn't. What else did she do? She she might have done. Uh, yeah, no, she did uh, my Horcrux album, and then she also did oh the dad shirt and the and the yeah, dad coin. Yeah. Great. And great. she's just a great artist, and and she did a bunch of posters for me. She's a freaking delight. I love and, it. Um, and there's there's a t-shirt design too but these were so expensive that yeah, i'm gonna have yeah. to wait uh I until i sell a bunch of hats uh to, to buy the t-shirts i love it I, I think that's great i think you're gonna they're gonna sell real well they look adorable they're not yeah, I think, uh, no one has to explain anything you know it's right and i think yeah. i'm gonna i think i'm gonna have to go 35 on on with and that'll be shipping and everything but it'll oh, be 30 right. for real like in yeah, person, but person. 35 just to cover because all of sh shipping went up too. So it was weird. Like all postage went up. Yeah, everything's going up, but what we're getting paid. Right. right. Yeah, that, that stays the same. Um, I'm going to do a distillery in Pittsburgh in November. Sure. Okay. Not going not gonna to lie to you. Looking forward to it. Yeah. I course. did Pittsburgh. I think I did Pittsburgh once with. Who is that guy? He's tiny buff guy. 
at the time, but now he's 50 and he still talks like a little child. Oh, Mitch um, Mattel. That's it. Thank you. It's like, I feel like we're playing, <laughs> we're, I feel like we're playing Password. <laughs> And uh, uh, yeah, I, I uh, he was he was the one remember that told me, and I think I told you this on an episode six years ago, that he said never lose weight, Jackie. That's gonna be your hook. Is that you're gonna be the oh fat comic? Oh my god! And I was god. like, what about my heart? Does anyone care about my health? Remember, you know what though there is do you remember hook comedy like everyone was yeah. obsessed with what your hook is what's your thing right what's your thing what how are you gonna make the audience uh, remember you and and right. how are they gonna sell you like there was a, a hook obsession for about 15 years it seems like <laughs> have faded. right well it, it came in and went out and it came in as, as soon as someone with a hook made it big the hook came back right they're like oh my god it's gonna be a hook yeah. And uh, you're like, stop with the hook. Now it's like everybody's kind of doing what whatever that hook would be on in like on TikTok, right? Like I'm thinking of right. like, like Leah Reddick with like wealthy woman, you know, she yeah. just does that character on TikTok. And that could have been a hook, like a stand up hook, you know? Right. Right. But like that voice that... that Maria does, the that sort of that successful. Yes, oh, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. 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 And then, right. I do. Yeah. Uh, all the she when she does her mother she does something where she talks to the audience and then she does her mother as she's introducing that audience member to somebody and the way she says the word darling oh my god it's like it it hit me at, on every cell in my body you know darling. right it just reminds you of somebody's mother so uh, many old women so many yes. elderly women that i grew up with have had that had that way of speaking and that way mm -hmm. and my mother that overemphasized oh darling just the way they hit it and i can't do That's it a, so i'm i right. apologize for even attempting but she really fucking nails it did a great job thank you i'm in guys I'm oh in let's seattle i'm at blacks so, oh clean that up yeah and then please. let's take a break and then let's come back. Where are you? Yeah, what what, what are you doing next? Yeah, I'm in what Seattle. Uh, I'm at LAFS. Uh, oh. September. Uh, yeah, 8th and 9th. And then the oh, okay. week after that, I'm going to tell you ride. And um, I'm getting paid not enough money, but it will be exciting. I'll be there's like a ton of musicians there. It's like a real huge festival. And maybe I can see some like cool music as well. But uh, that's like the 15th through the 18th of September if you're in Colorado. And okay. I'm at Go Bananas October 13th and 15th through 15th, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. In Cincinnati? Cincinnati? You and I are at the Ke Creek and Cave November 9th through 11th. Right. In Austin. Yep. September 18th, or excuse me, November 17th and 18th, I'm at the Comedy Port in Fort Collins. And then December 1st, I'm at the Boxcar Comedy Club in Springville, Utah, which is actually very close to Salt Lake City. So I think this is a new club, the Boxcar yeah. Comedy Club, and I'm there the first weekend of December. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's neat. I was looking at that thinking, how come I'm not doing that? But then I, and then I uh, backed down and I thought, well, congratulations, Lori. Thank you. That week. That's I. I hope to always have that response when I see you doing gigs. I'm not doing right. Well, I'm doing. I, I'm doing I Minneapolis. Do. That's my next yep. gig. Is I'm. I'm going in early to do some college panel that I don't understand, but yeah. uh, they're going to send me in two days early or two nights early so I I can hang out with. I'll get to see my sister and my nie my niece and that niece and nephew and then maybe some of my brother's kids, my other brother's kids. And maybe my other brother, who um, is great. Jackie. And then but I'm going to do a lot of Los Angeles. Go ahead. Remember colleges? Remember everyone, everyone trying to come up with their hook for colleges? There was this woman. Oh, I did you ever name. do NACA? Yes. I it, did not do well at NACA. <laughs> I was not a NACA comic. I didn't realize till I got there. I'm like, oh, this is not who I am at all. Right. Right. Um, but there was a comic who was, oh, I forget her name, but she was like a recovering alcoholic. And her whole thing was about 
and colleges ate it up because they don't want, you know, it's like drinking. It was like a, a, a comedy about drinking and being responsible. Right. She needs much money. I think her, her, her last name was Fox. Does that sound familiar to you? Hmm. Not Julie Fox, but something like that. Okay. And, uh, I'm like, how did, she, plus she was attractive. I'm like, wait, you're attractive. You have this <laughs> incredible non-drinking thing and your last name is Fox. That is not fucking fair. <laughs> all great. kinds you're hitting ticking off a lot of boxes foxy picking off a lot of yeah. boxes um yeah but a lot of college acts you know i think it was it's such a brutal way to make a living that they they are permanently unable to perform after like 10 years of it like remember buzz sutherland no i don't he he performed west he coast did guy? a donald duck impression no he was from missouri and uh, I think I've talked about him before, but he used to wear a sweater with Donald Duck on it. He did a Donald Duck voice and he worked colleges for like, I don't know. He was like college act of the year and was like nonstop working. Right. And then I never, I don't know what he's doing now. I, I've never seen him in clubs. I mean, he made so much money. He may, you, you may just be like done at that point. Right. I don't think so. Cause Pete Lee, one time Pete Lee told me that he was doing, was it? Was it over? Was it over ninety college gigs one year? Ugh. Right, that was the year he got divorced. <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah, because yeah, he's never home, and uh, and now he just does. I think he's in with all the with all the chains, so he does the road. And yeah, does yeah. So he's, he's doing yes, he's doing he's great. doing fine. Um, but not only, I mean, you could also not be home working chain clubs, but you're in a better mood. Because you're working comedy clubs. If you the isolation of college gigs is so severe that you, you never feel good, you know. Right. At least they're not. They're working really a club. Hard you're gigs. doing your act. Yeah. You're yeah. killing, and then you're hanging out with comics afterwards. It, you're not hanging out with students. You know, it's uh. They're it's, a grind. It's not good they're for you. Yeah, they're a grind. Yeah. The your nooners are the worst. You know, you're performing for for the seventeen people that are trying to study or eat lunch and mm -hmm. you got to do 60 minutes and you're just up there. I've only are done they, a couple of them myself, but yeah. Are they still as prolific as they used to be? I mean, are, are, is, is that a, still a way to make a living? Like it used to be, it I don't like know. For a while I feel in like... the nineties, it was a nineties thing. And now there's so many places for students to get entertainment that you don't have to bring a comedian to the university for way too much money. I don't know. This feels like when they asked Seinfeld what he thought about college crowds. Uh, he hadn't performed in front of a college in probably 20 years. And he was like, right. I understand they're real woke. Anyway, so. Right. Um, well, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm saying. Do, no, no. Do, but I don't know how college, it runs. Yeah. I mean, I used to be astounded at the amount of money that they would pay a comedian. Right. It's, it's like, you guys know, we, you, you don't have to. And you students could drive 15 minutes and see the same comic for you know but, and it would but a lot for, of them are 18 when they club. can't and oh that's and they're it. given and they give a lot of money for these clubs and stuff and to bring sort of culture to the campus and i know but all I, these I feel things like I, right as as a parent if someone who's going to be going to college soon i would not want part of my son's tuition to also be paying for a comic he could see for free uh online or you know for 25 bucks in a club you know what i'm saying no, uh, I, mean, I, I, no. or maybe I know what you're saying, but I don't agree with it. Um, you don't like it. What? I said, you're killing a job. I, it's true. I mean, I apologize. <laughs> Ooh, back I, pedal, it's a back job pedal. that I never had. So I'm not, too, <laughs> I don't feel bad about it. All right. What just happened? But you know what? It's keeping them out of clubs. So I retract everything. More college gigs. Right. So in October, uh, I'm going to finish uh, plugging my gigs. Uh, in October, I am doing a run with Maria that is Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and Chicago. Mm -hmm. And um, and then in November, I'm going to be back in Pittsburgh uh, doing just one night. And then I don't think I have any other work. It's uh, I need some work, you guys. Somebody All find days. three grand plus uh, plus air and hotel if you could. That'd be great. Oh, Thanks we know for... your price now. I'm at the I'm at the punchline in Sacramento uh, the weekend before New Year's Eve, and then New Year's Eve I'm doing a show in Marin for um, Chip Ayers, who used to own the other cafe in San Francisco, and I hadn't heard from 
I don't know, in 30 years. <laughs> you just oh, wow. Say, hey, uh, it's weird. In San Francisco, you can retire from comedy and still book comedy in Marin for some reason. <laughs> if that still works. Uh, oh, I am doing, I do have one weekend in uh, Ann Arbor in December. So, oh, nice. Yeah. I get, I, uh, yeah. Somebody, uh, somebody find, I might go to Australia. I'm working on it. I can't get, um, I can't get Will Anderson to email me back. So, hey, Will, if you're listening, uh, oh, Jackie. fucking DMs, man. Jackie, is this, is that please. sad? Does it feel it sad? It is sad. It's sad. Well, what do I care? I, I'm exhausted. I just got off the yes. road. I've been traveling right. all day. My yep. scratchy voice. I have travel. So travel voice. Yeah, I have travel voice. But I will say that the guy who returned my phone, the Lyft driver, I posted his oh. Venmo, and he made like three hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of people just that's sent nice him fives. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. People. Yeah, that's super cool. Uh, I had a guy return a lift. I didn't post his Venmo though. I didn't think of that. I just, I gave him a hundred bucks for returning my phone to me. Yes. Uh, yes. And, uh, yeah, that's what, maybe uh, more. that's what I did. I was yeah. like, how much would this cost me to replace? Plus what a pain in the ass. And then divide that. Well, and Lyft charged me $20 for his inconvenience. Oh my God. And I was like, he probably got 11 he... of that, which is why I posted his Venmo and Venmo him. You know Dark why I bet him. most. Yes, most people do not give these people money when they bring your stuff back. I bet that's why they even had to institute that. They, if people expect to have it brought back to them without any sort of like reward or anything, compensation like or something. Guess. Yeah, yeah. So yes. I, but uh, Keith, you d you did me a solid there, brother. Thanks a lot. I yeah. got it back. So I got got on the plane in Nashville at like eight thirty. At ten a.m. the next morning, I had my phone in Milwaukee. And nice. yeah, so I, I land in Milwaukee, I get my rental car. I remember, I, uh, I remember, I luckily remember who I had rented the car from. <laughs> uh, and, um, Hey, how much was it? Was it expensive to rent the what car? The daily rate. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I saw, I said it to you. I think it was like, uh, 45, 50 bucks. Okay. See, that's normal. That's normal. Yeah. Cincinnati 70 a day. In oh Cincinnati? wow! It's ridiculous. <laughs> well, my my car, by the way, had Washington plates, and two people like I stopped at a go kart track on the way to Oshkosh to go go karting, and um and uh and the kid the fourteen year old running the go kart track was like, "Are you from Washington State?" And I was like, "You got to get out of this town, kid." <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I said, "No, this, I came from this, the car rental place at the airport." This car has seen more of America than you have. Don't let that happen, guys. <laughs> I think we're close. I think we're very close. I was just about to put ready to be can. Gonna be done. Yep, it's the it, it's the good enough club. Once more. 